The world is a wondrous and confusing place. The advancement of science and history and expansion of our knowledge of the Earth gives us a more comprehensive view of the world than ever before. With these constant leaps forward, we are uncovering more and more secrets each day, some of which have left scientists, archaeologists and historians perplexed, with numerous questions and attempts to provide explanations as to the fascinating artifacts and locations they have stumbled across. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three interesting discoveries. The Kola Superdeep Borehole and Why It Got Sealed In the time period of the space race when the United States and the Soviet Union were at odds, both were competing to advance their technology and military. The Cold War produced many accomplishments and encouraged scientific progress, such as space travel. However, it has also had ambitious projects that subsequently failed and were abandoned. On the Kola Peninsula in the Arctic Circle, there is an abandoned 1970s Soviet scientific research station. Its decrepit state is jarring against its background of gorgeous forests, lakes and snowy mountains. In the middle of the empty building, a large round metal cap is buried into the floor and bolted down with metal rings. It is quite a small metal cover. You would not even give it a second glance if you did not know to look for it. This cap covers the Kola Superdeep borehole, which some have called the entrance to hell. This hole reaches a staggering depth of 12.2 kilometers or 40,230 feet. This measurement was recorded in 1989. Many powerful nations were rushing to be the ones to drill the furthest into the Earth's crust and reach the mantle. The Soviet Union came the closest, and it took them nearly 20 years to achieve what they did. Even after this time and this depth, they still only made it through about a third of the Earth's crust. Scientists believe the crust to be a thin layer of the Earth's skin and only 40 kilometers or 25 miles thick. Beneath that lies the mantle and then the Earth's core. The mantle itself is about 2,900 kilometers or 1,800 miles deep, although none of this has actually been confirmed. It is all speculation from research using waves to determine the different layers and densities. Science has always wanted to know what lies beneath the Earth's surface. So the superpowers tried to race each other during this time to try and find the answer. They were all very secretive about their findings though, and unwilling to share until much later. Even when they did share information, the other countries would not believe them. Those years were rife with spies and political tension, so there was little trust even amongst scientists. The Soviets claimed they found free water as they were drilling, but those claims were ignored by other countries. The United States was the first power to begin drilling into the Earth in 1950. The Soviet Union followed in 1970 and Germany in 1990. It was difficult because they needed advanced technology and machinery that did not even exist yet. They first had to create the tools to accomplish their missions. The US drilled in the Pacific Ocean, where the crust is thinner. However, it is also where the ocean is deepest, making it extra challenging for them. They ended up using multiple propellers on every side of a drill rig to keep it steady in the water. Germany developed the vertical drilling systems which are still used today in the gas and oil industry. In 1967, the US Congress dissolved the drilling project due to high costs. The Mohol project lasted 17 years and cost America $40 million or £28 million, but managed to drill only a few meters deep. The Soviet's Kola project halted in 1992 because the hole's temperatures were much higher than expected, reaching 180 degrees Celsius or 356 degrees Fahrenheit. They lacked the equipment and the money, and with the collapse of the Soviet Union, this led to funding being halted. Germany was also soon forced to stop drilling because of the high expenditure. The dream to drill into the mantle persists. Japan is currently taking the lead and planning the next drilling project. They hope to continue the drilling in the Pacific Ocean, anticipating a $1 billion project. The Kola Superdeep borehole remains abandoned and closed off from the world. When researchers were drilling, 
they would often hear a deep rumbling, which they had no explanation for. Locals say they can still hear the screams of those being tortured in hell coming from the hole. It was welded shut due to safety concerns, as they did not want anyone messing around and falling in. But perhaps they also feared something else coming out. Scientists discover dense structure between Earth's outer core and lower mantle. Using earthquake data gathered over the span of 30 years, scientists have found the presence of a large structure deep within the Earth's layers. These dense objects sit between the liquid outer core and lower mantle at about 3,000 kilometers below the Earth's surface. The researchers used a machine learning algorithm to comb through earthquake seismograms and find anomalies, much like the algorithm used for space telescope data. They sent this data through Sequencer, which analyzed hundreds of earthquakes in the Pacific Ocean from 1990 to 2018, only observing earthquakes that had at least a 6.5 magnitude. It managed to analyze 7,000 different measurements of earthquakes covering nearly the entire Pacific Basin. For this project, the scientists decided to use the data from shear or S waves instead of the primary or P waves. The S waves travel after the P waves and are much slower, moving between the Earth's core and lower mantle. Their slow speed and high amplitude produce much cleaner recordings. When the S waves came into contact with these mysterious dense structures, they produced post curses an echo signature that indicates an ultra-low velocity zone, or ULVZ. These zones are dense anomalies situated on the boundary of the core and mantle. They are relatively unknown. Scientists have no idea what they are made up of or how they are formed. All they know is that it is massive and dense. The structures have a diameter of about 100 kilometers or 62 miles, and noticeably slow down the waves passing through it signaling that it is big. Sequence have found an anomaly that had never been detected before underneath the Marquesas Islands in French Polynesia. It also showed that the structure beneath Hawaii is much larger than what was initially believed. These two locations displayed the strongest post-cursor signatures, which scientists argue is evidence of two mega-ULVZs that stretches for over 1,000 kilometers. These zones are ancient, Scientists think they might even be made of materials that predate the existence of our moon. The massive collision that broke off a piece of the Earth to become its moon occurred more than 4 billion years ago, which means the zones might have exotic or primitive geological features. The researchers intend to continue working through the datasets and utilizing Sequencer to find other hidden information. They also want to include data from the Atlantic Ocean as well. Our Earth's layers are a mystery to us, so scientists are ever curious and hope to expand our knowledge and understanding of this unknown aspect of Earth. Darvaza Gas Crater In Turkmenistan, also known as Turkmenia, a gas crater has been on fire since the 70s. This sovereign country is east of the Caspian Sea and is one of the most sparsely populated countries in Asia, with only 6 million inhabitants. Its cities were some of the most important stops along the Silk Road and are considered the oldest oasis cities in Central Asia. It has the fourth largest natural gas reserve, which actually contributed to the Davaza gas crater. In 1971, Soviet geologists and engineers set up drilling rigs in the middle of the Karakum Desert. They believed the location was a profitable oil field, but instead found a natural gas pocket underneath the drill site. Soon after they conducted their initial assessment, the ground collapsed, burying the rigging equipment and creating a large crater. Fortunately, no one was harmed during this accident. The crater covers 5,350 square meters, reaches a depth of 30 meters, and features continuously burning hot spots and orange flames. The fire and its longevity led the villagers of Davaza to refer to it as the door to hell or the gates of hell. Once the ground collapsed, the Soviet researchers feared that the crater would spread dangerous methane gas and reach neighboring villages and towns. 
they decided to set the gas on fire to burn it all up, estimating that it would burn for only a few weeks and then die out. It has now been 50 years, and scientists believe it will continue burning for much longer. The natural gas comes from a large gas pocket deep within the surface, which allows for a slow accumulation of fuel and protects the gas flow from the wind. The Turkmenistan government has been indecisive over its opinion on the crater. In 2010, the president ordered that the crater be closed to reduce its influence on the other natural gas fields nearby. The country wanted to increase its production and export of natural gas, so they feared the crater would impede their potential revenue. Then, in 2013, the president declared it a protected nature reserve. It seems the government now plans to use it as an attraction to promote tourism. Regardless, the crater will continue to burn and entice visitors to come and see the gates of hell. But what do you make of these interesting facts? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.